So our next and uh, last stop for this session, for our last uh, keynote speaker, is automatic generation of video game character images using augmented structure and style networks. Our presenter is Matthew Mann. All right, hello everybody, I'm Matthew Mann. I'm here to present on automatic generation of video game character images using augmented structure and style networks. This work was done in collaboration with Dr. Howard Hamilton at the University of Regina. Our main task in this research was given a set of video game character images, generate novel ones that look realistic and have appropriate structure and style. So we began with a data set of 721 Pokemon images. We then ran it through our method, which is the AS2GAN, and our goal was to generate unlimited images of Pokemon. So, in other words, to generate these Pokemon, we begin with a latent vector of normally distributed <coughs> random numbers. Then we run it through our AS2GAN and we get a final image of a supposed Pokemon. We based our work originally on structure and style networks, which were introduced in 2016. These networks begin with a latent vector and then run it through a structure generator to generate a structured image. Then this structured image is combined with another latent vector and pushed through the style generator to generate our final image with both structure and style. We start by talking about the structure GAN. The structure GAN typically was just a usual generator and discriminator setup, with the generator producing images to fool the discriminator whose main objective is to detect the differences between fake and real images. Hence, as they train back and forth, the discriminator gets better at detecting fakes, and the generator becomes better at fooling the discriminator. We also add an encoder network, which takes a structured image and maps it back to a latent vector. This allows us for, to have two new training configurations, the first of which is an autoencoder. On the left, you can see a structured image, which is then encoded into a latent vector using the encoder. Then, a generator is used, the generator is used, to map back to the original structured image. We then use a reconstruction loss to ensure that these images are the same. The latent regressor is set up in a similar fashion, beginning with the latent vector and using the generator to generate an image. Then, the encoder must reconstruct the original latent vector from this generated image. These two training configurations ensure diversity in our model by ensuring that all real images can be mapped to a latent space and all vectors in the latent space are able to generate a image and a good looking image as well. Thus, each training iteration consists of four steps. First, you train the discriminator on real and fake images. Next, we train the generator adversarially with the discriminator. Then we train our two new training configurations, the autoencoder and the latent regressor. Here are eight examples of structured images generated using latent vectors. The blue represents the background of the image, the green represents the body shape, and the red represents the eyes. Moving on, we go now to the style gap. The style GAN's main objective is to take a structured image using the conditional generator and add styles to it to make it look like a realistic image. So here we see that it is very similar to the structured GAN in that it has an encoder, a generator, and a discriminator. But there are three important things to note. First is that the generator is conditional, meaning instead of just taking in a latent vector, it also takes in a structured image. The discriminator uses patch classification. Seeing as we are looking to get good styles but not good structures, all we need to do is discriminate on patches of the image. And finally, it is important to note that the discriminator is non-conditional, meaning it only looks at the final images and not the corresponding structured images. So again, we see we have a conditional autoencoder and a conditional latent regressor now, which work very similarly to the structure GAN the only difference being that the generator uses structured images now. We also add another network to the style GAN entitled UNet. 
Uh, this has been frequently used in semantic segmentation and we use it for the same purpose here. We take final stylized images and we map them back to their original structures. This allows for two new training configurations. The first of which we directly train the UNet on real styled images and their real structures. This is to train the UNet to be able to label structured images. The second training configuration does not train the UNet, but only trace, trains the conditional generator to be able to generate images with styles and structures that are consistent enough to be mapped back to their original structured image. This ensures that all generated images are integral to their structure which they have been given. Each training iteration now consists of six steps, the first four being the same as the structure GAN, and then we now also train the UNet and the conditional generator with the UNet. Finally, we can move on to our results. So we implemented a lot of different GANs on our data set of 721 full images and 249 structured images. As we can see here, I picked the two that I figured were the most relevant for baselines. The third is my method, and the final row is a set of real images. The top is the DC GAN, which is a one-step approach which directly generates the images. It's important to note that these have good styles, but lack any sort of structure. As you can probably tell, there's no eyes, no limbs, no mouths, etc. The second is the original structure and style GAN without our contributions. The original structure and style GAN produced good structured images but failed to produce good style as due to the small size of our data set, it overfit on the structured and style pairs using the conditional discriminator. Thus, when seeing novel structures, it doesn't produce good images. Finally, our, uh, our method takes the best of both worlds as we have good styles and good colorization, as well as having eyes, limbs, and mouths in certain cases. And finally, on the bottom, you can see real images. And obviously, we are not quite there yet, but our, uh, our contributions have taken a step towards it. Additionally, we also um, improve on the flexibility of the generative process. As you can see on the left, we have structured images. And then on the right, the three images in each row represent different styles for the same structured images. Hence, if you were to be generating images and you like the structure of one image, but you don't like the style of it, you can just generate a new style. This has been the automatic generation of video game character images using augmented structure and style networks. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, two minutes for questions. Uh, I, yeah. uh, have you considered generating images not from noise but uh, from like the properties of the characters or the names or something like that? Uh, I have, but that would take a lot of um, on, that would take a lot of labeling. Yeah. And so it would take labeling all the different attributes of each and every Pokemon. Okay. And then so this one is a, this one only takes the labeling of eyes and body shapes. Perfect. And so it would be a little bit simpler for a use case where someone wants to create a video game, which quickly can quickly generate images, it would be much faster if we didn't have to label all of them. Uh, so how do you get the structure? How do we get the structure? Um, going back here, we got the structure, um, uh, the original structured images. Yeah. Um, so this is an original structured image from a Pokemon. And so what we did was, these are typically just pictures of Pokemon on white backgrounds. And then we just simply cut out the eyes, put, pasted them as red, we filled in the rest of the body with a green, and we filled in the background with blue. Yes? Um, sorry, I have a question, but uh, seven, 721 Pokemon is a fairly small data set. Yes. Uh, it feels to me like with internet and with the hype of Pokemon, you could have gathered a, very, a larger data set right. quite easily. So why the choice of? So we also trained this ap after I had already presented the paper and stuff, or not presented, but uh, after I submitted the paper, I did find a data set with 5,000 images, but the problem with those sorts of data sets is that they are not consistent, and also for the use case of wanting to generate lots of Pokemon just from a, a few, 
it would be even more useful to be versatile so that if someone was to use this, they don't have to generate or they don't have to draw up, have an artist draw 5,000, only needing to do a couple hundred. Or in one case, specifically at the end, uh, I left this out because these aren't the best looking images, but this is an example where we train on a data set of only 80 structured and 80 styled images, just to further improve our versatility of the model. Thank you, Thank you very much.